How, how many years as a pro? 19. 19. Mm. Not bad. Tour de France's? 17. 17. Paris through Bays? Don't really know. A lot? Yeah, a lot. Olympics? Six? Six, yep. Got the record there. You've you rolled me. No, no, sorry, mate. Happy, I'm happy, though. Happy for you to just roll me. You can make a comeback if you want. I'm done. Nah, <laughs> no, no, no. So, mate, the list now, World Championships. Well, I don't know how many you've done there as well. What, mm. What's a standout, mate? What's a standout? You know, Olympic gold, wearing the yellow jersey, or... Um, yeah, you know, being world champ or, uh, or winning, winning the Paris Roubaix. What? Yeah, it's really it's a really tough one because it's you know the track and the roads, chalk and cheese. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know for me, winning the Olympic like the Olympics was my dream as a mm. kid when I first started riding. Um, you know, when I was at school, all, all I wanted to do was go to the Olympics. Yeah, don't know why. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so. You know, chasing that dream for like twenty odd years, and if that hadn't have happened, I would have been pretty peed off. I reckon that would have really mm. annoyed me for the rest of my life. But I think not winning in Barcelona, losing by one point one second—not yeah. that I remember exactly. Well, uh, Olympic, <laughs> the Olympic record as well. Yeah, remember yeah. serves me. Yep, yeah, for for eight or something. Yeah. Um, wouldn't even win a junior national no. title these days, would it? Yeah, pretty <laughs> bad. <laughs> no wonder we'd lost the Olympics. <laughs> nah, a long time um, ago. But yeah, I mean, I think if we'd won that first one, I, I wouldn't have probably competed in six. I don't, no. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I kind of then swapped over to the road and did both a couple of times anyway. Yeah. So, but just yeah, I was just a chasing that eternal dream, I guess, yeah, that yeah. gold medal. And when that, so you know, the, the emotion. I you know, I see a picture every now and then from you know when crossing the line and. You know, even I can see in my face, it's like just relief. There's so many emotions coming out, but it's... Well, that's it, a lot of relief. attempts. A lot yeah. of attempts at it and a, a lot, lot of, of failures, yeah, yeah. But the failures keep that fire burning. Yeah. But, you know, I can't say that that's any better than a Perry Bay. You know, it's just diff two different sports. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, two different dreams, two different... Got their own story. Yeah, lanes in life. So, you know, winning Roubaix was a dream kind of later on, you know, mm. after I started riding Perry Bay, I went, you know, okay, this would be pretty cool to win. Mm. All the teams you rode for, well, pro teams, that is. Yep. Um, anyone that's, any team that stands out? Yeah, I mean, one stands out um, by a mile, and that's, that's Bjarn Reese with CSC. Yep. I mean, yep. um, you know, I was always in a French team from the start, and, and you, you know, everything's good. You got nice truck, nice bus, and good equipment, nice clothes, and you're doing all the big races. You kind of can't, see at the time because you're inside that little bubble mm. you can't imagine how another team can be better mm. um, but you know I used to look at CSC when I was riding with whoever Cred Agricole or whatever team it was Kofidis and kind of go you know they're all they were just well drilled yep you know and they'd go to a race and bang first second fourth eighth you know and you got holy crap the reason why it was so professional, was organised, everyone knew their role in the team. Yep. You know, you had a room full of legends, you know, Ulick, um, Voigt, you know, it was just Sustra, it was just endless. Every rider there was yep. a hitter. Um, and everyone respected each other, but you had to fight for your spot. And the yep. other teams, it was just kind of, you're in your comfort zone, everyone just, yeah, yeah. Tour de France team, try and win a stage, or whatever, if we don't. Here it was like, right, we're going to Tour de France to win the tour. Mm. You're riding on the front for the first week. You're saving yourself for the mountains. You know, everyone just had a job. Obviously, yeah. it was a little bit more complex than that, but that was basically um, summarising it. And we just had the best equipment. Yeah, the training camps were, were a bit like what we used to do with Charlie. They really were. You know, we'd go to America for five weeks, yeah. um, straight after tour down under, fly to California. Uh, we had four week camp. The whole, you know, the whole team. The whole team. Yeah. And, we all rode in one massive bunch yeah. every day. If someone stopped for a leak, the whole team stopped. If someone stopped for a puncture, the whole team stopped. It yeah. was never leave anyone alone. And that's the kind of mentality yeah, yeah, yeah. That we, you took into racing. Um, and the training was just so 
precise. Um, you know, you never went into the red, only in certain race days. Um, mm. But it was all about being able to back up, Control. back up, back up day after day, mm. which is a lot like what we did yeah. back in the day. So I found it was almost comforting. You know, yep. everyone was, I heard all these scary stories from guys that have been with Bjarne and, oh, this mate's terrible, it's so hard, you know, we'll kill you. <laughs> I'm like, mate, I reckon I've survived the, yeah. the harder stuff. Dumb and it was almost like, you know, bring it on again, like challenge yeah. me, and it was awesome. And I really thrived off it. And had, yeah, obviously had a couple of really fantastic seasons with him. I, I keep thinking back to, um, to when you won the gold in uh, Athens with Brownie. And you because I think you'd come straight out of the Tour de France. Yep. That yeah. was pretty all your prep. Yeah, rode the road race at the Olympics and then yep, road flew race. back to Toulouse so I could train. Yeah, you did a bit of track prep. Uh, a day, yeah, a couple yeah, of days. A day. Couple of half hour <laughs> sessions. <laughs> but, but hey, but that's what I'm, what I'm getting to is like, I, I still remember just how you look, you were 10 steps ahead of everyone else on the, on the track. I had no idea what was going to happen to Madison. Um, I didn't even, couldn't even remember the rules. Um, but <laughs> all I knew was 50k, and I'd just done the race the week, week before. It was 260. You know, mate, this is going to be a, the distance is going to be a piece of piss. But yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if the leg speed will be there. But in the end, um, yeah, just whacked on a little bit bigger gear, and I guess just come, having that. I mean, I just had nothing to lose. No. Um, and I remember specifically telling Brownie exactly what tactic we had to do. Yep. Um, every Madison that I won with Brett Aiken in Australia or wherever, yep. we were on the front foot attacking. Yep. From you know, sit back, let the guys do the first sprint, and then absolutely bang Hit over em. the top. Um, and yeah, we we just got to be on the you know, in Olympics or Worlds or whatever. You can't be a lap behind or, you yeah. know, chasing, 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 because then guys start going for second and third. You just had to go out and go whack and then hang on and, yeah. Worked. It worked, thank God. <laughs> no, it worked nicely. But, um, Stu, I think, yeah, I don't think there's probably any other, you know, cyclist or athlete that's probably experienced as much as you have. There's probably not, not any other uh, guy you'd probably call a legend as, as, as I could yourself. So, mate, I appreciate your time and your effort and I think it's you know, the honesty in sharing with us your stories, mate. Appreciate Much it, mate. Appreciate it. And you're a legend as well, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. that.